There we go. Hello, everyone. Um, it's really nice that you guys could join us uh, today. Uh, let me see. What am I? What am I presenting? Am I, can you see the slide deck? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Good. <clears throat> All right. Um, welcome, everyone, again. <laughs> now I'm focused. Now I can do this. Um, we're going to talk about Heroku and Heroku Connect today. So before we kick off, we just want to thank our sponsors, um, uh, our platinum sponsor, Odiseva, and Capstorm and Southern Cloud, who our bronze sponsors are. We're very, very grateful to our sponsors for enabling us to do things like these study groups. So thank you very much. Um, I want to introduce Susanna to you. Susanna, do you want to introduce sure, yourself yeah. to the people? Sure, yeah. Quick, quick intro. Hey, guys. I feel like I know most of you, but if we haven't met yet, uh, my name is Susanna. I am a technical architect at Odiseva. Um, I have been working in the Salesforce ecosystem for nearly nine years now, and what started out as an admin and did a little bit of development and now working as an architect. I am uh, also Colombian, fun fact. Um, and I have a bunch of certs and a dog named Parker. <laughs> <laughs> In that order of importance, not, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm Charlie. Um, I work for a company called Sins Group, great place to work. I currently live in the US. I'm originally from South Africa. I couldn't find a South African flag to put on the slide, but Never mind. Um, I got a bunch of certs, and I love working with Susanna as part of the Ladies Be Architects. We have so much fun together, studying together, and um, she's my swag buddy. We we all go on the swag. <laughs> so um, I love doing these study sessions with her, and thank you for for doing this with me today, Susanna. All right. So what do we want to do today? We want to talk about. Um, oh, I actually didn't update the slide. We want to talk about certifications, and then we're going to talk about, instead of Heroku Data, which Susanna talked about last time, we're going to talk about Heroku Connect. And we're going to talk high level about the concept, and then we're going to go and look at what it looks like. Um, for me, to learn Heroku Connect, the easiest was to actually go and build it and go fiddle with it and, and go see how it works. It's not very complicated, so I don't think we're going to break our brains today. Um, there are still portions of it where I'm not 100% sure always how to do it. So that's why this is a study group. And that's where I need you guys to to jump in and, and help me through this um, how, uh, so we can study together. All right. Um, remember, Ladies Be Architects, just do a shameless plug. Uh, Gemma uh, founded us in um, about two years ago. It must be probably three years ago. It feels like a long time. Um, on her journey to become a CTA, and Susanna and I here in the US kind of bring up the leadership, Gemma's in the UK, and together we're trying to take people with us in our journey to become um, a Salesforce architect. It used to be very CTA orientated, but these days, I mean, with the new permit and the new architect programs, we're, we're really trying to empower not just ourselves, but everybody on their architect journey, whether you're a data architect or an integrations architect with Heroku, or whether you're a, a technical architect or a solutions architect. And now these days, Salesforce have the B2B commerce architects, um, uh, solution architects. So this is what we do. And we are very much supported by the amazing ladies down under, Emily and Vicky and Adrienne. Uh, they are our ambassadors and down under, and they're doing a fantastic job to uh, to just make things work <laughs> and run things and do a whole bunch of stuff behind the scenes. And we are internally grateful to them. All right, next up, champions. Um, we have a new and improved champions process. So if you've had a certification in the last month or whenever you get one, please go to that link and fill it in. That way it'll come back into our system and we will be able to uh, celebrate with you. We'll send you something in the post and um, we can celebrate you at one of our monthly meetings. So um, is there anybody on the call that did do a certification this month or since we last met, which was middle of August, right? <laughs> anybody here? No one? 
I did a I PE just... one recently, but I can't remember when. It might have been last month, might have been just before. Well, congratulations. That's congratulations. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks. So this is Jade. I got the Einstein cert, and um, I also don't remember when I got it. Maybe it was last month. <laughs> <laughs> congratulations, Jade. Um, PD1, Rob, is hard. <laughs> it's a tough one. And the Einstein one is, it's also um, really it's tough. tough Susanna, have you done it yet? I know you were I doing did. I did, but I, I had to take it twice. It was very challenging, um, but Yes, I'm glad I did it. And Jade, congratulations. That's a quite an yes. achievement. <laughs> so yeah, it was really hard. <laughs> so we need to go fill in the form so we can send you something, please. Sure. I'm begging. OK. <laughs> All can, right. you, can you copy that link into the chat? And then it will become clickable for us. Yes, as soon as I find my screen. <clears throat> Thanks. Where's the chat? For an architect, I'm seriously technology challenged. <laughs> <laughs> You're not alone. Wow. It's just so many tools and things, and every tool is different. I think um, every day my other Zoom, Blue Jeans, Go to Meeting, Google Meeting, it's like five or six different types of meeting tools, and they all differ. So <clears throat> let's get going with Heroku. Um, I'm not much of a slide person. Those of you who've watched me do study groups, slide kind of dis slides distract me. So I'm going to do a couple of slides, talk in high level, and then we're going to go and dig into the technology and, and really see what it does. So ultimately, when we're done with this series, um, hopefully we'll all be ready to do the Heroku, Heroku Architecture Designer Certification Exam. So looking at the exam guide, the, the little portion about integrations, that's 15% of the overall exam content, um, is where they talk about recommending architectures that use Heroku Connect appropriately, including the correct use of external IDs. So just by reading that sentence, it's implied that there's a wrong way to use Heroku Connect. <laughs> um, and, and there definitely is. There's a way when, when you're pushing too much data, and your pipe isn't big enough, and you've mapped too many tables, or you're syncing the wrong type of fields. There's quite a few nitty gritty things that you need to think of when you set up your Heroku Connect. And then the second thing on integrations is you should be able to recommend techniques to integrate Heroku apps with the Lightning platform and understand when to apply a particular technique. Uh, so that's what hopefully through Heroku Connect today we'll be able to tackle those two outcomes of the exam guide. So last week, Susanna told us about Heroku Postgres, not last week, last session. She talked about the Postgres database. Do you guys remember this, if you were in the session? Um, yeah. it's, a, it's a managed SQL database service that's offered by Heroku. Um, they've got different tiers, different sizes. There's the free one, and when you use a Postgres in Heroku, it's point and click setup. It's very easy. It's all managed for you. Um, and that is a, the, re the, the reason why we're talking about it is because it's an integral part of the data synchronization process of Heroku Connect. So wanted to make sure we we're refreshed on that. So let's look at Heroku Connect. What is Heroku Connect? Heroku Connect is not the Heroku platform. Um, it's an application. It's an app that's pre-built that you install on the Heroku platform. So it's important to understand that distinction. So when you have application, if, if you have a data or a UI or a mobile app or something that runs in Heroku and you want to get that data into Salesforce, you have lots of different ways of doing that. You can build a custom integration from the Heroku platform to Salesforce, or you can install the Heroku Connect app and configure it to move data between Salesforce and Heroku. And usually on Heroku, you would have some kind of database. It's typically a Postgres database, or Susanna last week talked about all the data, typical data um, management approaches that you could have on Heroku. But in terms of Heroku Connect, the easiest is Postgres. So Heroku Connect is an add-on application that you install on Heroku that moves data 
from Heroku to Salesforce or from Salesforce to Heroku with config. That's basically it. Okay, end of study group. See you guys next month. <laughs> <laughs> Joking. All right. <clears throat> so with every kind of app, and I mean, if we think about what our integration of pre-built apps, we've got Salesforce Files Connect, we've got Salesforce Connect, we've got, um, there's a multitude of pre-built connectors that you can use to connect Salesforce to something. All of them have limits and considerations, and Heroku Connect is definitely not exempt from that. So those two links on the page, when you go and look at it, the, the loads of consideration links, there's loads. So I, I'm not going to put all of them in a slide, and I'm definitely not going to read them to you. So I kind of highlighted the ones that I've come across when I've been working with Heroku Connect. Um, the first cool thing is that Heroku Connect data sync does not count against your API limit. So remember, you're synchronizing data from a Postgres database into Salesforce or from Salesforce. So it uses Salesforce API. And if you're syncing real-time millions of records, then that could potentially be bad for your governor limits. But because it's Heroku Connect, it doesn't count against your API limits which is a really great design consideration if you already have high API, API usage on your platform. So by default, and this is a setting, Heroku Connect will poll your Salesforce for changes to sync every 10 minutes. And then for a certain subset of objects, you can have accelerated polling. So when you design and when you think about the integration that you're building here, Remember that you've got to work on near real time. It's 10 minutes sync intervals, not synchronous immediate. So remember that when, when you work with your design. Sharing rules. You can use sharing rules as a workaround um, to ensure that Connect can only sub synchronize a subset of data. The approach is not really supported by Heroku Connect. So you're relying on Salesforce functionality to limit the visibility of the data in your Postgres, which isn't always a great idea. So just know that if you really need to, you can, but it's not supported. And then row counts can differ. So if I'm synchronizing my accounts between Salesforce and Heroku, my expectation out of the box would be that if I have 500 accounts in Salesforce, I should have 500 accounts in my Heroku Postgres database. Most often, they won't be the same number and you will tear your hair out trying to figure out why the numbers are different. Um, there's quite a few reasons. Some of the records might fail. Um, there might be, uh, oh, there's somebody trying to get into the Roku session. Let me quickly see if I can help them. Uh, where's a quick way for me to copy the call info to someone? I'll put it in the, I'll put it in the chat. Okay. And then I can just pop. It's actually somebody that works in my company. Okay. Like, you can like that. okay, there you go. Okay. Post it back to him. All right. So there might be quite a few reasons why your data numbers aren't the same in the data tables. Your first key to figuring out what it is, go through this list of considerations. And there's like a checklist, not a checklist, but if you go through them, you'll quickly figure out. One of the main things is fields with long text fields and rich text fields. There's huge amount of data in those fields, typically in Salesforce. And when you synchronize that, especially when it uses commas and quotation marks, it could have an impact on the data being transferred and that record could fail. So then there's one less row in your Heroku Postgres database. Um, so just be aware that it is something that happens quite often. All right, so the first thing we need to do is we need to have the Heroku command line interface installed whenever we want to work um, with Heroku. It requires Git, and if you don't have Git, you have to install Git first. So. Um, I have actually, when I prepped for this, I realized that I'm on a brand new machine and I don't have anything installed on my, on my machine. Um, so I was thinking we could do it together, install it all together and have a really nice see how it does. Because usually when people present these things, they've already pre-installed things and 
it's already done and it doesn't make sense. So one of the first things I need to do, I've opened my terminal and I'm on a MacBook. Um, so the Windows controls, I can't really help you with. <laughs> but one of the one one of the first things you need to do is um, you need to install the CLI. Uh, I was thinking this is going to be an issue. Um, all right, we have other installation methods. So I'm going to share on the Heroku documentation, the Heroku CLI, there are different ways to install it. So you can either use um, uh, the, uh, d -d 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 you can in download and install it um, through your terminal, or you can do the standalone installation methods um, and they give it for Mac, for Ubuntu, and for Linux machines. And then you have to verify your installation. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use the standalone. And I'm just going to copy that and put that into my terminal screen. There we go. And it doesn't usually take a very long time. Um, any questions from anybody so far? Everybody's still on the same page. Is there a cost to Heroku Connect? No, it's free. Oh, okay. Good to know. There will be <laughs> there will be a cost consideration if you um, uh, w the, depending on what type of dinos you're using and what kind of workers you're setting up and how much data. I know there's different costs associated with the different Postgres sizes as well. But initially, like I'm going to set up today, I'm going to use the free versions of everything. So you can get a up and a up, up and running synchronizing data between Salesforce and Heroku for free. All right, so that's all I had to do is um, just use my terminal and I installed Heroku. So the next thing that I need to do is I need to go and verify my installation. So I am just going to type the command Heroku and version, and it should tell me that I have got version 7.43.0. So that means I'm all good. So now that I have um, it installed, I'm ready to go to the next step. The easiest way to really work with it, and I promised you guys that it will be point and click, is to go to Heroku, the dashboard. So um, go to dashboard.heroku.com, log in, you can create a free account. And when you're on your dashboard, you'll be able to see all your applications. Now, something that took me a while to realize is I can either do set up my whole Heroku Connect here in the dashboard with config point and click or i can do it all from the cli or i can do some in the cli and some in the point and click now knowing me i like the point and click much better than the cli because the cli isn't always easy especially if you don't understand all the commands so um i'm gonna for purpose of this i'm going to do the majority of the setup through the dashboard um, but I will show you some of the commands in the CLI as well. But they're also very, very well documented um, on the Heroku site. So one of the first things we need to do is we need to have an app. Remember, this is Heroku. We have a Salesforce. We want to have an application on Heroku that synchronizes data from Salesforce to Heroku. That's what we want to achieve. So I'm going to create my new app. And I'm going to give it a name. Let's call it my LBA demo app. Okay, I'm not supposed to do underscores. And it's not available. No one is. And I'm in the US, so I'm just going to choose. I'm not going to add it to a pipeline because I don't have any Heroku pipeline set up at the moment. And I'm going to click create app, create app. That is pretty awesome, right? I've just created my first app. So let me go back to my dashboard and I can see there's my LBA Demo 2 app, and then these are two other apps that I did previously. Clicking on my LBA Demo 2 application, it's you've got quite a few things that you can see. You can see the overview, 
all the resources that it's using, it's not using anything because I just created it. Any deployments, it gives me all the information on how to deploy. If I have code in the Git repo that I want to deploy onto this Heroku application, I can use um, the deployment methodologies here. And it gives me more metrics, and I haven't even um, enabled the Dyna, so I don't see anything. There's very little activity. I can also add collaborators to my application. So if I want you guys to work with me, I can create a user for each one of you. And then, of course, I've got some settings in the background. But we'll, we'll look at a lot of them in a minute. So now I have an app on Heroku. The other thing that I need is I need a login for Salesforce. So I'm going to go to my Charlie, uh, Charlie Demo Org. Uh, I'm in the wrong browser. Um, let me just get a new browser window open. I have my own demo org here. Uh, my domain is Charlie org, and I'm just going to log in. So this is the, the org with the data that I want to synchronize in to Heroku. There we go. I'm logged in. I'm going to go back here. So the next thing that we need to do is we need to go install Heroku Connect because that is the application that we want to use that's going to synchronize the data. So I'm going to just click here. You can see under, under overview installed add-ons, I can just configure add-on. And I'm going to go find some add-ons. And here I can just enter Heroku Connect. It then pops up. It says, do you want to install Heroku Connect or provision Heroku Connect on my app? And it will install it. And I'm choosing the free version. So you do have an enterprise and a shield version as well. And I'm just going to install it. And that's it. It is really so quick. It's been installed. And I am ready to go and configure it. Any questions? So from my overview page, I can see my connection. So I just want to jump back and show you guys. Remember, I logged into my dashboard. I went to Heroku. I clicked on, oh, I, I was previously logged in, but I would have clicked on login and I would have, I did that in the UI. If I wanted to do it through the CLI, I would use the Heroku login command. It'll ask me for my username and password, and I will log it in. I will log in, and then it will tell me that I'm logged in. So remember, I said everything you can do in the UI, you can do in the CLI. And then I created a new app by clicking the button, giving it a name, and say create. With the CLI, I can do exactly the same and create an app. When you create an app this way, it does assign a auto-generated name for your app. And it's very salesforce -y. It's like Sleepy Meadow instead of Hairy Goat. You know what our trailhead sandboxes look like? So it will um, auto assign a name for your app that you can change later. You can actually pass a, a name on the command line as well. There's a, a command line switch that where you can specify the name you want. No guarantee it's available, but yes, absolutely. If you just use the Heroku Create, it'll die. But you're absolutely right. Thanks, Rob. Right. Okay, let us switch back. Um, I can't see your faces anymore. Um, just want to get that video open. You guys can still see my. Yep, we can see your screen. Yeah. Okay. And your, your, your video. Yeah. Okay, good. Because I'm struggling to see you guys. <laughs> All right. So now that we have um, logged in, we have created our Roku Connect. Now we need to go and configure the Heroku Connect app. So we're going to open my app. And I'm going to have to create the setup. So I'm going to connect. And the first thing it's going to say is there's no databases. Remember Heroku Postgres is a free Heroku SQL database. So by just clicking the Add a Database button now, it will automatically provision a Postgres database for me. 
I just have to choose which plan and which app. So I'm going to choose my LBA Demo 2 app and set up my Heroku Postgres. So back on my app, I can see the resources available to me is now the Heroku Connect as well as the Heroku Postgres. And it's still free. It also tells me, and this is something interesting, it says it's attached as database. It means that the, it has already um, provisioned a config variable for database, which is linked to my hero group Postgres database. So that's something important to remember, because when you get into really complex integration environments, you might have more than one Postgres that you want to integrate to. So you could have different variables that you use for the setup connection. All right, so I'm going to refresh. It should see my Postgres, and I can see the data, the config variable that was created for it. And I can just use the standard cells for schema name and press next. It's very magic. All right, so am I connecting to a production environment? I am, because it's a dev sandbox. I'm going to use the latest API version, and I'm going to authorize it. So I need a custom domain. And it remembers me, thank goodness, because I don't remember my password. And then it gives me this OAuth screen, giving me, allow it, or asking me to allow access from Heroku to my Salesforce. I authorize it, and my setup is pretty much done. I have set up a Postgres database. I've connected my Heroku Connect application to my Salesforce org. And all that I have to go do now is create mappings. Any questions so far? Oh, side note from the OAuth screen. What's Eclair data? I have no idea. Was that something that showed on the screen? I didn't see it. It, it was asking for permission to access it, but it's, it's not related to this. It was just a, a, a side note I spotted. Oh, okay. I can follow it up another time. And I see your question, would you not add a Postgres first? You'd think so, right? Um, you'd think you'd have to go provision your Postgres first before you install the Connect app. But the Connect app is nicely set up that it will actually prompt you to install the Postgres. Yeah, that's uh, really if, cool. you had an, if you had an existing one, you could link it to an existing one instead of provisioning a new one. And if you had more than one, like Charlie was saying, it'll prompt you to select the, the database that you want to sure. leverage there. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's go map. I'm really not sure what kind of data I have in this org. <laughs> so let's see. Oh, and I'm logged out again. Let's see what's going on here. And this is one of these orgs where I do such a lot of nonsense in here. A lot of the stuff doesn't work. <laughs> um, so I must have something in here. Let's see. OK, I have two opportunities in here. That's something. I have two accounts and two opportunities. So let's go see how we synchronize that. So let's create a mapping. Now, the real magic, what happens here is it's now done a call out to Salesforce, and it's obviously retrieved all the objects in the org that it's connected to. But Whatever mapping I'm going to create here, it's going to automatically create those corresponding tables in the Postgres database without me having to do anything in Postgres. I don't need to understand how to write SQL. I don't need to know how to set up tables or to create the fields or anything in SQL um, in Postgres. So uh, this is really easy. So I'm going to choose account. It then says um, from Salesforce to the database. So data from Salesforce to my database, how often should it poll? And remember, we said we have the ability to change it, or I can accelerate it. When you accelerate, it switches to streaming API to trigger the polls when the data changes. So keep that in mind when you design according to the limits that you need to use. I'm going to leave this in 10 minutes. And then the other way around, something changes in the database, how often should it be written to Salesforce, and should it be written to Salesforce? So you can have the option of bi-directional or single directional updates. When you want to update Salesforce, it'll prompt you and say, it needs a unique identifier. And remember in our study guide, that was one of the things that they said, you need to be able to justify or say why the external ID is so important. 
Um, because if you think about it, we now have data in a Postgres database and we want to update that corresponding record in Salesforce. So it needs to match on something and that's where your external ID is super, super important. So it's going to ask, what do you want to use as the unique identifier? So what we need to do is we need to assign either an existing unique identifier or we need to index something. So I'm just going to use the name as an external ID here and uh, it should pop up. Um, all right, we're going to do that in a minute. Let me just do the first initial sync. So now we can say what fields we want to map. So create a date's good. We want name and ID. Let's get the owner ID and let's get shipping address. We'll get the type um, and their website. I also, what else do we think we want? These would all work. I don't want them. So remember the magic, whenever, whatever fields I choose that needs to be synced, it automatically creates that structure in the Postgres database. So I'm not going to save that. You could see there in the state that it says altering database schema. It was actually writing those fields into the Postgres data table. It pulled Salesforce for the first time. It synchronized. It says, I've mapped 11 fields. There's two Salesforce rows and there's two database rows. So I've just integrated my Salesforce with Heroku. And it, it's really magic. So let's do one more. I'm going to do my opportunities. So I can use my search up here. And I'm going to choose some fields. So I obviously want the account. Amount, do we have amount? Create a date, close date is a good one. Uh, and stage. All right. You can see there are some pre determined fields that we can't change, and that's usually your core system field. So, ID, if it's deleted, system mod stamp, because Heroku uses that for the synchronization process, so you cannot um, disable that. I'm going to save that, creating, changing the database, loading, reloading, polling, OK, and it's mapped through. The only bad thing about this is, there we go. You, you don't really have access to the Postgres database out of the box with Heroku Connect. You have to install another application from the Heroku um, store as an add-on to be able to view your Postgres database in a database structure. But they do give you access to see what data is in there in Explorer view, which is very handy. But if you want to kind of write SQL queries or work with the data in the Postgres database or insert new records into the Postgres, you'll have to have a Postgres um, viewer add-on. And there's a few, I can't remember one of their names right now, but there's a few that you can use. So here I can see. There is um, my two accounts. I can see their Salesforce ID. I can see their modified by. I also have a way to search. So remember, sometimes you won't have the same numbers in the two databases. You can come and see why. You can come and look at all the failed records, all the pending records, all the records, or all the OK records. And of course, refresh. All right, that was a lot of information in a very short period of time. Any questions? Susanna, do you want to tell us about data clips quickly? Oh, yeah. So we covered it in like, the last session. But for folks that weren't there, data clips is a way to um, share and see queries that you create. So if you want to, in, to leverage data clips on the information that's synced from Salesforce to Heroku, that's another way to view it and share the results of your query. Absolutely. All right. I can also see my Heroku app is idle, but it is online. Um, and if I were to go change something, let's go add a new account.
think that's about all I have to fill in on this account. And we can create a new opportunity to just because we can. All right. So what are we expecting for it to happen in our Postgres application? It'll only synchronize once it meets the, uh, the polling interval that we've asked it to, right? Um, do we know if there's a way to hurry it up? I do remember there is a way and I just didn't see it right now. So we said poll every 10 minutes, but what if I, um, there we go. I think if you reload or yeah, pull now. Pull, yeah. <laughs> When you're impatient like me and you come and press the button every couple of minutes because you don't want to wait 10 minutes. So there we go. You can see the account is updated through three rows and the database has updated to three rows. There don't is do that with enterprise scale data sets though. <laughs> <laughs> you, you won't gain anything. We've only got a handful of records here. But, yes. Yeah. No, absolutely. Yeah, that's, that's a really quick way to, to break it. I remember we were on a project where we synchronized millions of accounts for whatever reason, someone thought it was a good idea to synchronize millions of accounts from Heroku into Salesforce through Heroku Connect. And it took days, not just mm. because of the volume, but also because of um, the errors, the amount of errors that happened because Salesforce validation rules weren't cleaned up in the data beforehand. Mm. Um, but yeah, don't do that with large resources. Yeah. Another thing to uh, note about Heroku Connect is they, they've architected it to, to automatically select the best data API to use for the volumes that you're looking at. So if, what it tends to do is it will use, uh, I can't remember, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get this wrong now and Susanna's going to quiz me on it, <laughs> but it, it, I think it uses the REST API to determine how many records it needs to transfer. If it's under a certain threshold, it will continue to use the REST API. <coughs> if it's over a certain threshold, it will use uh, one of the other API mechanisms. It, effectively, it's trying to select the, the optimal uh, data uh, API. And it, it does a REST query first to determine how many records it needs to transfer. I seem to remember that from my, my study for this exam that I didn't get. <laughs> <laughs> from what I remember, it was the, it's the SOAP API. So the three right, APIs. So Kevin yeah. is the SOAP API, the bulk, then it either uses um, the bulk API or switches over to streaming API for accelerated yeah. um, polling. Yeah. Susanna, did we get that right? Oh, maybe she's just stepped away for a second. Yeah, she's the only one that's actually got this exam. So oh, sorry, I was on um, I was on mute. I was talking, and I was like, <laughs> um, so I was gonna say, no, you you have that right. And the thing to know about the streaming API when you leverage like the 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 polling and the the higher rate of sync, is that the streaming API is the one whose rate limit is um, it's like free unlimited streaming API events. Um, mm -hmm. So that's really where you get that savings with using Heroku Connect is when it leverages streaming. I think bulk and SOAP limits still apply. They're not free like the streaming API is with Heroku Connect. Yeah, okay. Okay, so, so even though the Heroku documentation says this does not account to your API limits, it does when, you, when you're using bulk and SOAP, but not when you're using streaming and you don't have a choice over which one you use. Yeah, I've only ever seen that the streaming is marketed as like the free unlimited, but maybe maybe now it supports free bulk, but I haven't I haven't seen that yet. Hmm. Something for us to dig into, maybe. Is it a question on the exam? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> There's nothing about like which one is free. No. Okay. Mm -hmm. Excellent. All right, so that is pretty much all I had to show you. And I think that is because it's, it's only 15% of the exam and, and there wasn't, I mean, when I took the exam unsuccessfully like Rob, um, there wasn't a lot about Heroku Connect in there. It I, it really made sure that it, you understand the concepts and the bare resource of it. Is that right, Susanna? 
Yeah, and the real big gotcha, like the really important thing to know is the difference between, it sounds silly, but when you're taking the test, it's like the difference between Heroku Connect and Salesforce Connect. And there's multiple questions, like when I took it, at least on my version of the test, there were multiple questions that were like, is this Heroku Connect or stream, uh, Salesforce Connect? So it makes sure that you know, like which one goes which way. And, um, you know, Heroku Connect is bi-directional, Salesforce Connect, and it originates sort of, you set it up in Heroku and you can go bi-directional. Salesforce Connect, obviously you set it up in Salesforce and it uses external objects and it can connect to, you know, any like any OData supported uh, external database. So I think that's the big, it's funny, it's not in the, you know, Heroku docs obviously, but the Salesforce exam really wants to make sure you know the difference because people yeah. often mess up the, the verbiage when they mean one or the other. Uh, can you quickly go back to slide 11 for me, please? Yes. Okay, so it says in there, um, recommend techniques to integrate Heroku with the Lightning Platform and understand when to apply to particular techniques. So when would you not use Heroku Connect in this instance? So that's exactly what Susanna was talking about. I think on right. that one level, that's, that's... it's Salesforce Connect versus Heroku Connect. So Right, okay. Either you want to physically synchronize the data between the two databases, so it's at rest in Salesforce and in your Heroku Postgres, or you want to just um, virtualize the data in a external object in Salesforce through Salesforce Connect. So right, I'm with you. Yeah. Yep. And I think that the other good thing just to know about um, is that there's a lot of questions around like Heroku and her, the different levels of security. So uh, again, it might not be in, in this little section, but knowing like Heroku Connect and the difference between Heroku Connect and like her, the fact that there is Heroku Shield and, and there's some questions about that, but I think it's probably more in the privacy section than Does, it, does Heroku Connect work with, uh, with Shield databases? <sighs> That's a great question. Um, so there's a Heroku Shield product that's a separate product. Yeah. Um, go ahead. Go ahead, Charlie. Sorry. No, no, no I was just supporting what you're saying. Remember uh, when we created our app, um, and when we provisioned the install, it asked us whether it was a Shield version or the free version. Uh -huh. So yeah. um, you have the you have the ability to use Heroku, the Shield applicable product, if you're using with the Shield, if you're working with the Shield database. And it's called Shield, and sorry, I just looked it up because I haven't looked at this in a while. Um, it's called Shield Connect, so you can use Heroku right, Connect okay. they have a with Shield. Right, okay, dedicated version, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Okay, any other questions? We've got about 15 minutes left. Is there anything else that we should dig into? Um, I just have a general question. Like, what would you actually store in Heroku? <laughs> That's not a bad question. Um, initially, when I was doing this, I was thinking, why would people do this? But remember, Heroku as a platform can launch lightweight Java apps. So let me give you an example. There's an app, um, P -P -W -P. there we go. There is a, a little app that, no, not that link, is hosted on Heroku. At, shows contact. You can see this is an app on Heroku. And what it does is it synchronizes the contacts from Salesforce into a Heroku Postgres. And then people can just, for example, see their contacts on their phone. Or this, in, this effect is a, is a progressive web app, which you can install in your on your desktop or on your um, on your machine. So, oh, so they don't need a Salesforce license. They don't need a Salesforce yeah. license. So and another, you, oh, yeah. oh, I was just going to add, sorry, another classic example, Jade, um, is if you need or have some sort of requirement for uh, like a mobile application. So Salesforce One or Salesforce Mobile, whatever they're calling it these days, you know, has a lot of, lot of features, but not all the features. Like there are certain things that like a Bluetooth connection or like some really, um, device specific functionality, it 
you can leverage your Salesforce data and put it in Heroku Connect. And then if you happen to have resources right in your company that know how to build like with Java or with Go or with another language that Heroku supports, they can use the Salesforce data and use their developer skills that have nothing to do with Salesforce to build uh, you know, a really custom mobile app that is driven by the Salesforce database, essentially. Yeah. I've, I've definitely used it as a shortcut to uh, not having to put out external licenses and community licenses before as well. We've just had one integration user that, that pushes stuff back into uh, from Heroku to Salesforce and vice versa. Um, back in those days, it was before Heroku Connect was a product. So we, we actually did it over uh, REST and SOAP APIs. Uh, but yeah, the use case was we were collecting, uh, you know, site contract uh, health and safety documentation. So we, we stood up a Roku website to collect that information. And then we used uh, APIs to move it out of Postgres and into Salesforce to hook it up to their account records. So, it, you know, because because we didn't want to spend money on community licenses just to give them a community site that they could look at information in. So. Yeah, absolutely. And someone just posted this as a good example of a Roku app. <laughs> and this is going to keep me busy for a couple of minutes. So um, uh, one of the other use cases I've seen, and let me just die here. Oh, no, I'm not dying. OK, no, I'm going to have to close it. Um, one of the other use cases I've seen is, and, and I really liked it, is say you want to, somebody created a, uh, for their field service, they just wanted people to track their mileage. So they created a really lightweight Java application, hosted it on, on Heroku, and then when you get in the car, you open the app and you just fill in the date and your starting mileage, and then later you fill in the date and your ending mileage. That goes into the Postgres database, and then it syncs into Salesforce as a summary record. It gets actually gets transferred and synchronized into the Salesforce database um, as their technician mileage for the day. So think about getting not just exposing data to people um, through a community site type, but also a way for people to enter data into the database, especially if it's kind of tedious transactional data that you mm. just want to get into Salesforce in a quick and easy way. Yeah, this knowledge would have been useful months ago. <laughs> uh, there, we had a use case where it's like, oh, someone needs a sales Salesforce license and I said for what and it was just like this one thing like this one data point or something simple that they had to enter into Salesforce so I said no <laughs> that could be data loaded <laughs> well now you can say I'll build you a quick Java app <laughs> so another another thing as well is that um, you know Heroku has some uh, very good um, entry level price point here so some of them are free depending on your needs yeah. So I think every Heroku Enterprise app I, I built a, a previous employer, including that one I just mentioned, uh, was actually just built on the hobby tier um, with the the free um, Heroku database. So it didn't cost them a damn thing other than my time. So you, yeah. can, you can do a lot with Heroku without spending any money. Absolutely. OK, so we've got a couple of minutes left. Um, I think this is what we needed to cover for purposes of the exam. And I mean, there's a lot more when you start talking about use cases and um, how to handle it. But um, as far as the, the exam preparation goes, there are a few more areas. We have four more study sessions in the Roku series that we want to go through. And um, both Susanna and I have some news. We're going to have to beg for forgiveness because we want to pause these study sessions for two months because we've both been assigned our CTA board dates um, for November. So we want to focus all our time on getting <laughs> prepped for the CTA oh, yeah. board in November. And then hopefully we can continue the series um, uh, kind of end of beginning December, maybe January. I don't want to, I know Rob, you wanna, you're planning on resetting the exam and you were using this as kind of prep. We don't want to keep you hanging and leave you waiting till January. Um, it's fine. I'm, I'm doing sharing of visibility at the same time. So I'll, I'll switch my focus more strongly on that one. OK. We, we've got a lot of sharing visibility videos that we've done previously. So yes. Okay. <laughs> cool. I'll look out for that. 
All right, so we won't do our, we'll do on session three somewhere, probably, probably Jan, we'll try December, right? But most people are away, but maybe December, maybe January. Um, and I think it's session four, is that right? I don't, did I miss one? one? Yeah, session four. Mm, yeah. Nice. <laughs> four. Do we, do we know which section that one will be? That's a great question. We have it, we have them planned out. And let me uh, see if I can pull it up. I'll log into and see. Okay, yeah, so you can do it faster. I don't mean to keep putting you on the spot here. No. Oh, no. Let's see, okay. session five, which was, you know what, look at us. We were targeting December. We didn't tell you guys, but we were internally thinking about December. And this will be, Ooh, this is a good one. So this is another one where Julian or Julian is going to join us um, yeah. for production ready applications. So we're going to talk about things like scaling and metrics and log. So logging, oh my goodness, logging is a big topic on the exam. So logging and monitoring your apps um, for production. So that is session number five. Perfect. Ooh. Yes. And session six in January is private spaces. It's Heroku Enterprise. That'll be private space, yeah. security, shield and teams, admin. And Julian's going to help with that one too. I think yeah, then we would have section. covered everything through. Yes. Mm. And that one should be a really good one because one of the hard things in studying for this exam, if you're not in like a enterprise Heroku environment, is there aren't you can't look at it. It's kind of like marketing cloud. You can't see it and play with it unless you have it. So getting someone from Heroku to come and show us sort of the the actual behind the scenes stuff is going to be pretty pretty cool. Yep. Yeah. All right. So let's see what else is done. I don't think there's anything more in this. Uh, we were going to deploy the app, navigate the dashboard, configure, connect, synchronize the data and then create a data clip. We didn't create one, but Susanna did talk about it. Um, we talked about some questions, and remember the Roku designer trail and trailhead? And that's all we had for you guys. So thank you so much. I appreciate that you guys take the time. Um, I know you're all in different time zones, and I appreciate it. Yes. Um, Rob, it's, it's late there where you are, isn't it? <laughs> all right, yeah, it's just coming up for 11 p.m. So. Oh, no. Time to go to bed. Yes, yeah, definitely. To to bed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's fine. I, I can do late, so I just can't do early. So, so um, thank you so much for joining. It was um, great well, studying you. with you as usual. And we'll see you guys. Susanna and I will see you in December. We'll hopefully have good news. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh. yeah, no, no smash. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank, thanks for the session as well, ladies. It's been really useful. Of course, anytime. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Good All luck. Right. Have a good day. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Bye.